welcome to the glorious Majikwe Game Reserve, positioned in the northwest province of South Africa, right on the border of Botswana. We are here watching this crazy sighting with a whole lot of spinbills at Jackie's Dam. Once again, it is great news that we can actually go live from this dam. We love it. We live here. This is our back garden, but sometimes signal is a little bit tricky. Good afternoon. My name is Lauren, and there we go with Dobby's trusty old thumb. There were some elephants, but sadly they have disappeared, and there was a giraffe somewhere hoping to come down. This is a very active water body. And boys will be boys. That looked more than a little bit of play, actually. Also doing a lot of lateral presentation here. Look similar sizes. I think this is real. Mm. You can normally tell by the impact if it's real or not. And this looks quite tough. Look who's just appeared. I think it's Modimo. Our old boy. Darby said, Lauren, I think if you look behind, you might see something that you like. <laughs> okay, Darby, you get the point for this one, but I'm still winning. He looks old. He's creppy skin, his hair, his eyes. From a distance, he looks like a magnificent beast. He is a magnificent beast, so he looks like a magnificent male in his prime. But when you actually get close to him, you can see he's an older lion. And he is the lion we had this morning, Modimo. Impala's not looking thrilled about your presence, Modimo. Well, our boy has finished drinking, and you know, the more I look at him, I think, oh, you are an old boy. I remember this. So, Purple Eye the Lioness came to Galagopan in Juma, and we all counted together. Many viewers participated, and I tried, and we got, she lapped her tongue, from what we could see, 682 times in one sitting. I wrote that down because I didn't want to ever forget it. 682 times. There you go. And there's a wonderful paper that explains all of this, and it says, ultimately, cats are better physicists than dogs, <laughs> because they're better at physics. They use inertia to overcome gravity. Dogs just curl their tongue up like a spoon. <laughs> Little did I think this day could get any better. It has. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five spotty hyenas. Oh, six is another youngster. <sighs> Davi, do you know what? Do you think we should get a tad closer, or are you happy? This is a carcass, this is a zebra carcass that all the commotion with the lions happened this morning and now we have my favorite animal. I was hoping for a brownie tonight but we're definitely not going to see one with all these bodies around. Just think when we arrived, all the ribs were there. Oh, they've all gone. Look at that typical Madikwe. So much happening in one scene. <laughs> what are you going in there for, huh? You're digging. Oh wow, we're digging. What are we digging for? <laughs> there are more Ellie's coming down that. Do you see Dobby? More joining the party. Andre, most likely not visually, that's for sure. Elephants are highly chemical. An unbelievable olfactory system. And recent research, actually, I think it was just a paper published possibly last year about the pachyderm perfume. And although that sounds silly, what it is all about is each herd 
has its own unique scent, its own chemical signature, just like a lion, just like a leopard. They have their own individual scents. A herd naturally has one scent and they call it the pachyderm perfume. And that really is how they recognize one another. That is how they will recognize kinship groups that they've maybe split from. That is how they will recognize relatives, long lost relatives. So they'll always know their matriarch through her smell. They live in a sort of world of smell, not like what we do. Thank you, Lauren. Yes, we're not the only one, or you're not the only one. We've also got some elephants here right on our doorstep here at Pridelands, uh, just outside Eco Training Camp. This is in Dlovu Dam, and uh, in Dlovu in the African language spoken out here in the Shangan language. It means elephant, so basically elephant dam, and now we know why. Now speaking to Andre, one of the experienced instructors here at Eco Training, he explained to me that on one given day, um, he has seen over 200 elephants come past this watering hole. Um, in one day, can you imagine? So definitely a hot spot. We can see a hammer corp every now and then flying around, and we do hear the hammer corp calling quite a bit here. Sometimes even the yellow bull and red bull, the horn bulls are here. Carla B, pool party. I like that. It is a pool party. Don't you just want to get in there and join them? <laughs> yes, well, look what we found. We have found three white rhinoceroses. We've got, uh, what, well, I'm not quite sure what sex those two are, but we've got a big male here on the right. You can actually see the size difference. Um, Looks like one youngster-ish, a slightly older one on the left, but he's a nice big boy, this one, very impressive looking creature. Of course, if you're unsure of why we know it's a white rhino as opposed to a black rhino, have a look at that mouth. So you can see how it's very squared off, and the black rhino has a much smaller head, and in fact it is a smaller body um, completely, it weighs a lot less. Uh, but has a hooked lip, so a little bit more like a horse's mouth. And that's because this guy, the white rhinos, they feed exclusively on grass, so they are grazing animals. Uh, this black rhino feeds exclusively on leaves and twigs, so it has a much smaller head and is far better designed for sort of cropping little branches off, whereas this is a giant lawnmower. Just trundles forward, swinging his head from side to side uh, and cropping the grass as he goes. But a ma magnificent animal, this one. So we are still sitting here with our slender mongoose. Can you believe it? This is the longest time I've spent with a slender mongoose because usually they are so skittish, they are so shy, and they always run away from us. Now, of course, you've got the female, the mother, lying down on the stump on the right-hand side, and then, of course, you've got the youngster on the left-hand side that just <laughs> is very interested, very curious about us. He's like, bobbing from one side to the other side. Oh, don't go. Can you see that black tip on the tail? Oh, how beautiful is this? Of course, compared to your mother, I was just saying earlier, compared to the banded and the dwarf mongoose that are in those big families, where the slender mongoose, they are solitary, unless, like this now, if it's a female with a youngster. Oh, look at that. Hello. <laughs> He's just like, hey. And the other side, it's like, it's giving us a bit of a dance, a slender mongoose, a slender dance. Oh, that's, I don't think that's a warthog. Who is it? <laughs> Hello. Fancy that, you're coming back. Good timing, we were just talking about you, handsome. Oh, sneaking in slowly. Can you see though how those tusks just look really foreign? They stand out like a sore thumb, but he is such a big boy. Oh, and he's going to go into his burrow backwards. Wait for it. Wait for it. He's going to go in backwards. After he's finished checking us out. <laughs> hey, big boy. Now bear in mind with the spotlight, I can't see this much clarity, this much detail. This is the infrared light. With the spotlight, all I can pick up is that change of color. So all I could see was the white tusks. I couldn't see him because he blends in so well in the dark. So I just saw these two white things thinking, what on earth could that be? 
and we just saw him from the side as well, so they were almost right next to each other, as though it was two spikes sticking out of the ground. It was just his nose and his eyes sticking out at the time. Oh, he's going to show you what it looks like. See, he's going down in slow motion, trying not to draw attention, being very cautious. Like that, that's what I saw. <laughs> Just two little white tusks. But what a stint it has been and what a wonderful sunset safari it has been as well. As much as we didn't manage to find the cheetah and her cubs this stint, we will try again next time, I promise you. <laughs> but it really has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for all of the love throughout and enjoying Amakala with us. Thank you for enjoying the sunset safari with the whole crew. We do appreciate it. And uh, we're excited to see what happens tomorrow morning. You will not be seeing Igor and I. We will be packing up and traveling out, but I'm sure that it's going to be a wonderful sunrise safari regardless. But thanks everyone for joining us. We hope that you have a wonderful day or evening, depending on the time of day, wherever you are. Hot Wheels Safari, we shall cheers to you tonight. Happy birthday. Thank you so much, everyone, and we will see you soon. I'll see you in two weeks back here at Amakala. Good night, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.